Discover how Nanotempers innovative tools are revolutionizing biotech. We will send experiments to the International Space Station. Join Philip Baske, CEO of Nanotemper, as he shares invaluable insights on leadership and vision. Of course, it's cool. It's very exciting. And this is why I like it so much to have this freedom and independence. Don't miss this thrilling conversation on biotech, innovation and space exploration. This is my advice on, on startups. Sell. Sell the device, sell the product before you have it. Watch the full clip and subscribe to my channel for more groundbreaking content. Enjoy the episode. I think my father and my parents supported me. And also it was this curiosity. I wanted to learn more, to also to go to a new city. And also all this, I realized there was a lot of knowledge out there. I'm a big science fiction fan. I think you mentioned the Star Trek. Yeah, yeah. And as we are now on TV, so I'm a big John Wick Picard <laughs> fan. And there's one thing I cool. want to do, engage. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I, I had my parents supporting me strongly. Mm -hmm. Do you have still a passion for space? I mean, I think the 80s, uh, it was Star Trek, it was Star Wars. Mm -hmm. uh, I think many people, our generation, started dreaming about space, space exploration. Yep. Elon Musk went down this yep. route. So yep. he still, I think, with SpaceX has the vision to build a colony on Mars. Mm -hmm. What's with your company? Is there any uh, visionary space project going on? I also like space very much, and we indeed have a project with the International Space Station. Really? Yeah. So I think it's now the launch is planned now for 2025. We will send experiments to the International Space Station. Yeah. It's a formulation topic, formulation of proteins, how to stabilize them. So I'm very excited about this project. It started already in 2014. Mm -hmm. So long time project. And the launch has been postponed for several times now, but it's now planned, I think, May 2025. And then we will send an experiment to the space station, so rocket science. Cool. <laughs> why, why space? Why, why do you need space for your work? In space, you, you have nearly no gravity, mm -hmm. and you have, we do a lot of this temperature, and, uh, and all our samples are in liquid. So an antibody, a truck like Hatsaptino does to zoom up, Mm -hmm. has to be stable in liquid and then you have a lot of temperature influences in temperature means you have thermal convection and thermal convection means if you heat something up it becomes lighter and then it moves upwards and this into a, induces flows which makes something to these antibodies and why do it move upwards it's the warm thing is lighter but it only is lighter because because there is gravity and to really understand what, what temperature alone does to it without flows, you have to switch off gravity. What you can't do on Earth, but on International Space Station, you have microgravity, so nearly no influence of gravity. So we can study the stability, the thermal stability of antibodies without the influence of gravity, without thermal convective flows. And then this whole problem becomes simpler and we hope to learn something from this. How, how can you imagine that? I mean, it's quite, it's really exciting to imagine that a company that the films, basically I saw also your post with, mm -hmm. uh, with the Oscar on, uh, on your LinkedIn profile where you posted that you're the first person who touched the Oscar uh, here on the, in the podcast studio, uh, who is going to space on top of that. How can you imagine that? Is he, do you just call Elon and say, I need a beam me up, beam me up Elon or beam me up Scotty when we stay in the Star Trek picture? How do you organize such a space project? Is it, is it tricky to get into that program or is it just like uh, calling a number and say, I want this experiment, shoot me up and I do it? As they approached us, so scientists approached us that it could be interesting for mm -hmm. us to do this because it's, for science it's very interesting the switch of gravity and the studies the problems here. So they approached us if it's also interesting for us. And it's now running for more than nine years. And it's not clear if you can make money with it. So I think this is why I like the freedom and independence we have. If I'm venture capital, 
driven company, I have to focus on getting money. Yeah. So I won't, I think, I think I wouldn't have done it. But it was just, in, there was an opportunity to do rocket science. Mm -hmm. And I'm a science fiction fan. I love space. And then scientists uh, approached us and then we took the opportunity because it's cool. It's very exciting. And this is why I like it so much to have this freedom and independence of a bootstrapped and found on company. We can only, I don't care if I earn money with this. I do it because I can. I do it because it's interesting and there may come something out of it. I don't know. It's very risky, but maybe it's a really cool thing and at least a lot of fun. I mean, in life, it's a lot about fun. Mm. We, we just don't live to earn money or whatever. It's also about entertainment and fun. And this is a super exciting project. So we do it because we can. You mentioned a couple of times that you like science fiction books. Yeah. And now I'm curious, which was the most influential science fiction book on your work? I think it's, a, it's called Lucky Star Space Ranger from Isaac Asimov. Mm -hmm. There is a, a guy, it's a, it's a detective stories with, with a guy who studied physics and it says a science council helping the governments to, to solve difficult problems. Mm -hmm. And this was somehow a hero for me who solved, let's say, science fiction problems with, with science. So he studied physics, he was a cool guy, a hero, and this somehow resonated with me in my teenage years. And I like the science fiction mode where they build up a new universe, they set up rules, mm -hmm. not real rules, but rules and stick to the rules. So they build a setting and stick to it and say a new, completely new world evolves. And this helps me to get out of this operational mode and to open up my brain for new things and new, new ways of thinking. Yeah, Isaac Asimov was a great writer. Oh, yeah. yeah, I love his books. Uh, you mentioned bootstrapping. When, I've, when I connect the dots to the acceleration incubation programs, in my opinion, it's all about fundraising. Mm -hmm. And very often I get the feeling when I talk to entrepreneurs who were part of these programs, which are pretty much good, um, that they feel a little bit insecure when they get a lot of rejections from VCs because not every business idea qualifies to become a VC yep. case. It's just basic, uh, basic VC science, let's call it that way, that they invest in certain kinds of projects that guarantee basically a 10x to 100x return. And the majority of the startups ideas are not really qualified to have such a perspective. Um, Many of the scientists or entrepreneurs give up then and say, okay, when I don't get funding, I don't continue on that route. You said you started a company with bootstrapping. Did you feel like a second? I mean, you wrote in your post, yeah. uh, we were second hand entrepreneurs, I think. Yeah. Was it uh, really that way that you felt that uh, VC route is superior to bootstrapping? So I think I, there was a, a woman from it, from Handelsblatt who asked me in a posting, do you feel second class? And I just yeah. picked it up. Ah, second class was it? Yeah, it was second class to do this bootstrap. Companies feel like second class class because I complained about, you know, normally I don't complain. Sometimes <laughs> I do. A little bit complaining is fine then. <laughs> <laughs> I complain about that they only talk about venture capital mm. because most important is that founders know that they have options. If you only get told there's only the venture capital way, this is wrong. You have also the other way. It's not about getting venture capital, it's about getting money. You can also get some money from the customer. You can invest in a, in a financial guy getting venture capital or you invest in sales getting some money from the customer. Mm. And then it's not about not talking about technology, it's really talking about products. It's a technology made for a market fit. It's a product, it fulfills a certain need, and it's about selling this product. I mean, you have to get, you have to force the money to come to you, mm -hmm. and sales is a good you have way. To force the money to come to you. I mean, That's if great. you are 